Hi guys, welcome to week nine of Online Comp 1. Um, I have a few really important things to talk about in this overview video, so please um, stay tuned and pay close attention. Um, I first wanted to visit your forum for this last week about uh, Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. You had some great thoughtful responses. I'm really enjoying um, reading your thoughts and discussions. I wanted to point out, and just kind of for a point of reference to get you thinking a little bit more and a little bit um, more deeply and critically, this idea that when, you know, in, in school, elementary school onward, even through adulthood, when we talk about Black History Month, when there are Black History celebrations, typically the figures we look at are Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, um, very nonviolent non-threatening um, individuals in the right and the um, struggle for civil rights. And I think thinking about Malcolm X is really fascinating because, um, well, first of all, we often think of Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X as complete opposites. And in actuality, toward the end of their careers before they were each killed, um, they both had started coming a little bit more toward the middle um, in terms of Malcolm X becoming more peaceful and Martin Luther King Jr. he delivered some speeches that aren't as well publicized um, that kind of deal with the situation more urgently. But I'm always fascinated by how people respond to Malcolm X because as um, in my classes generally speaking, typically the majority white students are reading this 40, 50 years later and all kind of have a similar response that you did, that his words aren't as immortal because they are more threatening, they feel more violent, they have a limited audience. But I also like to think about when we talk about our founding fathers and, you know, give me liberty or give me death, the Revolutionary War, we really celebrate that kind of rhetoric, celebrate this kind of fighting for independence by any means necessary. Um, so I like for us to sit back and think just about that fact and who writes history and who the history books are kind of made for in terms of who might feel threatened and who might not feel threatened. So um, just think critically about that, um, that these messages in both of these texts that you read of we can't wait both kind of run through both um, the letter and the speech. In some ways in Malcolm X's speech he's talking about the economy and very kind of practical economic goals. You know you have to open your own companies, you have to um, open your own businesses, I should say, in your communities, um, a very economic argument that probably seems familiar to us in many ways now. Um, and Martin Luther King Jr.'s was a bit more ideological. So again, um, remember that things are always more complex than they seem. And think about when, you know, we celebrate the founders of what we understand to be the United States of America in their violent um, uprising against their oppressors, we do celebrate that, but we look at Malcolm X sometimes with um, suspicion or disdain for having similar rhetoric. Um, so just think about that. That's um, at the end of the day, what I want you to be doing all of the time is thinking really critically about all sides of things um, and that everything's always more complex than we think. Okay, so your suffrage speech assignment that is due on Friday, um, hopefully you're working on that. Um, I posted, it, it's not even really a PowerPoint presentation, it's like three slides, just thinking about the structure of the compare contrast essay. Um, this one is a very kind of short and sweet comparative analysis. You will have on your works cited page four sources. I've given you all of those sources, two websites, um, and I've updated the websites because I apologize for the dead link on the first assignment. 
So two websites that give brief historical background of Truth and Anthony, and then the speeches themselves. So for the speeches, you don't have a ton of information, but just use what I've given you. So when you use your handbook, and if you also use a citation generator like Night Sight, but remember you have to use your handbook too, um, just fill in all the blanks you can to cite a speech and to cite a web page. Um, so your works cited page will have four sources, and then within your essay, you will quote each speech at least twice. Um, and after you quote them in your in-text citation, put Truth or Anthony. Um, and then you'll probably want to use a bit of information from the websites as well, in which case you would cite those properly in in-text citation, um, a, the title of the page, since I don't think there's an author. So do your best with this assignment. Um, remember third person point of view, a comparative analysis. You're not just saying um, Truth used the pathos appeal like this. Anthony used the pathos appeal like this. Don't just kind of state information, give it meaning. Um, I encourage you as you're writing, um, as a pre-writing exercise, to make four Venn diagrams just to kind of brainstorm. The first one, the rhetorical situation. Use those websites. Think about how their rhetorical situations were similar and different. And then one for ethos appeal, one for pathos appeal, one for logos appeal. Um, and look at how they're similar and different, thinking all the while about their rhetorical situation. Because certainly Truth had an almost completely supportive audience. She was speaking at a women's convention. Whereas Anthony was speaking in court to defend herself. So the appeals they used were very different because of those reasons. So remember you're analyzing, you are giving meaning to the information that you glean from these sources. Um, so do your best. It should be about two to three pages without the works cited page, and then you'll include a works cited page. Um, MLA style, you know the drill by now. Um, and you'll upload that as a Word document on Friday by noon. Um, I've also posted your week nine writing assignment, um, and we're going to talk about synthesis um, up next. So, and this is going to feel kind of similar. There are a lot of similarities um, between comparative analysis and synthesis. So synthesis, typically you're making a claim and synthesizing multiple sources and weaving them together to support your claim. Um, and this isn't one of your major essays. This is another kind of shorter essay that you'll be working on um, just to kind of get you um, trying out some of these skills and practicing citations. So I posted, um, well, let me kind of give a preface to this. The articles that uh, I'm having you read for this week are about a very sensitive topic. And um, last semester, there was big news out of uh, Maryville, Missouri, about a case that closely resembled um, Steubenville High School case in terms of a teenage girl um, being raped by classmates and the town's response to that. So. Um, there, there were a couple of pretty major articles that got published immediately about it um, last fall, and I decided to use them in my comp class. Um, since you are taking a college composition class and you are all teenagers, um, I'm not kind of shying away from this topic because I do think it is an important topic, and we're looking at it through the lens of academic writing. Um, that said, you know, the content warning is real, um, and we say sometimes we use the term trigger warning. So if you do have kind of an emotional response to these articles, please feel comfortable talking to me, talking to trusted adults, talking to your counselor um, at school. Um, that's really important. But also just think about doing this assignment through the lens of academic reading and writing. Um, and I encourage you to write more in your journal about it, write reflectively, um, and again, please talk 
to me, please talk to a counselor if you would like to talk to um, an adult about your reactions to this topic. So that said, um, I provided for you um, an article from the Kansas City Star that was published about the Maryville case. And from a journalistic standpoint and from a writing standpoint, um, it's a really excellent piece of writing um, and really excellent coverage of this awful case. Um, after the news of this came out, um, a writer for Slate Magazine wrote an editorial, um, her audience being college-age women or teenage women, to stop getting drunk and stop, um, in kind of her claim, putting themselves in this position. This enraged a lot of people, and I provided you an article that was in direct response to her that's written in the very same way that she wrote it, but the audience is college-aged men um, telling them to stop getting drunk. So look at those two articles and think about them kind of being part of a conversation. So you have the news item that comes out, which unfortunately is one in a series of news items, um, like I referenced Steubenville. So one writer responds by speaking directly to young women. One writer responds to that writer and says, no, we need to be talking to the young men. And I've also included a third article that was published months before in response to the Steubenville case. Um, from a parent's perspective about talking to sons about this. So um, you have three different perspectives dealing with the same issue. And I have provided you a Word document um, that I've copied and pasted the text of these articles into, but I've kept the hyperlinks intact. So I would like for you to print them out so you can mark them up as you read them. But um, if you're looking at them on your screen, when there are hyperlinks, if you want to read more about what they're referencing, um, you can certainly do that. For your synthesis assignment, you will look at these three articles, and they have the same topic, but they deal with that topic in very different ways. So what you're going to do is, um, again, in third person point of view, no, I think or I believe you're making a claim, trying to kind of practice this argumentative style of writing that we're going to be doing for the rest of the semester. And I want you to quote and weave together these three articles and use them to support your argument. Um, so again, do your best at this. This isn't one of your major, sorry, I was about to sneeze. This isn't one of your major essays. Um, this is like the synthesis writing assignment where I'm just wanting you to write a short essay kind of trying out some of these skills. Obviously, still do your best, but you are practicing in-text citation, source use, quoting sources, and starting to synthesize sources and make an argument. Um, so this is due next Friday by noon. I don't have a discussion forum about our content this week just because of the nature of the content. However, um, when we get um, week after next, so technically our week 10, it's ECC spring break. So um, you're not going to have much to do that week. I want you to work on catching up your, on your journal. Um, I'll probably give you a preview of what's coming up if you want to get started um, getting ahead of things. But when we reconvene that following week, um, we're going to really be jumping into you writing formal arguments. Um, there will be an opportunity in the context of our other readings to discuss some of the thoughts you might have had when doing the synthesis assignment. Um, okay, this has been a really long video. Um, thank you for watching all the way through. Please email me if you have any questions or concerns. Remember to think really deeply and re really critically about everything around you um, and keep doing your best. Have a good week.